Good morning, folks. It's no secret that I love the Tropical Rainfall Measurement Mission, and I'm very excited for the global mission launching in T-minus 30 days. These videos come from Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio and are all about the GPM. Now, while the original mission covered the tropics, the new mission will cover a far greater amount of the world. Additionally, the satellite itself has detectors more advanced than those in the original mission, with the ability to better analyze a broader scope of the weather below it. From a modeling, data, and just plain cool point of view, those 30 days can't go by fast enough. Good luck everyone involved. Top article is about a river of hydrogen in space. While you're reading it, keep in mind the interplanetary and implied interstellar and intergalactic magnetic fields and connections, along with our discussions on how space is not really a vacuum. Also, while you're at the NRAO, might as well check out their tremendous visualization of supernova dust. It's a superb imaging job they've done with a large array. Top weather watch remains northeast of Australia. Overnight, the government experts decided to toss a warning on the system as well. Got a high feeding a low with plenty of precipitable water in the atmosphere and no shortage of warm water storm food below. I do indeed believe this will be named within 48 hours. Next watch is for the United States. The cold is back. Those multi-decade cold records set weeks ago are indeed in jeopardy once more. Got a Canadian low matching a southwest U.S. high and forcing cold air into the Midwest between them and down all the way to the Gulf. Snow, ice are possible in the south and my thermometer was in negative numbers when I woke this morning. Lastly, it appears the storm was overall less intense in Europe than the previous day. Nevertheless, the system is warmer than expected with more energy than expected and the low is still well defined with potential to cause more headaches today. Let's have a look at the current conditions. The solar wind is showing considerable density and speed drops. The speed heading intermittently below 300 kilometers per second. Very, very weak. Space weather calm. But not so weak as the X-ray flux readings. We've taken a number of M flares now with the activity concentrated on the incoming limb. The departing groups are close to Earth's magnetic connection to the star, so a flare would be a polar radiation watch. But now the focus for CMEs and geoeffective flares shifts to the massive incoming groups. The Northern Associate doesn't look too bad himself, but the Game Maker is on the South. Expect Beta Gamma Delta Magnetic Class, High Zurich Score, and more flares to come. If you haven't seen How to Watch the Sun, now might be a good time to check it out. 30 minutes with that YouTube video and you'll be a better solar observer than 99.9% .9 of the people on this planet. The current Earth-facing coronal holes are small and kinda weak. Full focus should be on the incoming sunspots. M-flare chances are near 90% and the X-flare chances are around 50, pending confirmation of the Delta Magnetic Classification. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.